Hello, and welcome to the Money Marketing Podcast, and welcome to this special series of Weekend Essay Podcasts. Join us as we delve into the personal narratives of our editorial team, exploring the intersection of life experiences and financial advice. From triumphs to setbacks, each episode offers a candid glimpse into the journeys that shape our perspectives on money management. Get ready to uncover the human side of finance as we share our stories, insights, and lessons learned along the way. Welcome to the Weekend Essays on the Money Marketing Podcast. Maintaining old clients while bringing in the new. It all started with the website. The usual content had been wiped, leaving a black background, a new logo, and an email sign-up link. People speculated on social media about what this meant. Then the envelopes containing plain black postcards arrived by post. The tiny embossed words on these cards were barely noticeable. People took to social media to show off their envelopes or flog them on eBay. When a framed poster appeared in the window of a Sussex pub, mainstream media picked it up and it was clear something was going on. I had no idea what guerrilla marketing was until I got sucked into the unusual marketing campaign for Songs of Lost World the Cure's first studio album in 16 years. This caught me by surprise, which is precisely the point. Guerrilla marketing is supposed to involve unconventional marketing methods that rely on word of mouth or going viral on social media. So instead of official announcements through mainstream media via press releases, fans have been the first to hear about developments through a series of clues, hints and teasers. It's been fun. Like financial advice, music is a business where you ideally want your existing audience or clients to grow with you while picking up a decent number of new ones. My oldest son Liam is studying the business side of music as part of his level 3 diploma in music production performance, so we're having more discussions about this sort of thing at home. When Liam told me he was learning about the pros and cons of signing to an indie or major record label, it reminded me of the debate about whether to join a small or big advice firm or an independent or restricted proposition. If I was an advisor or a musician, I know exactly which way I'd go, and why. But trying to maintain a loyal customer base that appreciates what you do, while future-proofing your business by appealing to a new, younger audience, is more difficult when you're well-established. I would want to stay true to myself and my brand, doing what I'd always done to some degree, because I wouldn't want to alienate existing customers. You build a loyal customer base by putting yourself out there in terms of values, services and marketing messages that are distinct from your competitors. These things obviously click with long-term supporters. I wouldn't want to chase new markets if it meant becoming something I wasn't. But at the same time, I wouldn't want the confines of doing what I'd always done and how I'd always done it. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I want to try new things, move with the times and secure the future of my business with a healthy pipeline of new customers. But I have no idea how I'd try to achieve the required balance. The Kia have achieved this with varying degrees of success in the last 46 years. The band has ridden out periods of being eclipsed by the latest trends, such as Britpop. They've been slated for changes in musical direction rather than delivering more of what went before. If it didn't sound like the classic album's pornography or disintegration, some people just didn't want to know. But this hasn't prevented the band from maintaining a loyal fan base while attracting a steady stream of younger fans over the world. Even without any new music releases, strong live performances and social media interest has kept it all going. At Money Marketing, I've been working on features that tell me the challenge for financial services is to cater for older and existing clients while engaging with a younger new audience in a way that appeals to them. Research from FTRC around how advice firms are delivering information to clients and from pension administrator Trafalgar House show there is a balance to be had between digital and face-to-face communications. Firms need to communicate with clients in the way they want, But if preferences vary within a client base, how easy is it to be all things to everyone? I'm convinced this would be simpler to navigate if we had a wider mix of age groups giving advice. I thought the recruitment of younger advisors was improving, but after speaking to recent graduates who want to become advisors, I'm not so sure. 
He took one graduate from the prestigious St Andrews University in Scotland nearly four months and around 200 applications to get a job in the advice sector as an administrator. Many graduates really want to be trainee advisors, but the roles just aren't there, so they have no choice but to go down the admin and para planning route. One young advisor who is doing this told me it doesn't teach people the skills needed to be an advisor and that moving from a senior para planner to a junior advisor is tricky as it involves a pay cut. Employers don't see the progression in the same way as I do, he said. A different source has told me firms are reluctant to take on young people as trainee advisors because it's harder for someone with minimal life experience to build meaningful relationships with clients. I sort of get that. I'm married with kids and could easily relate to someone going through a divorce. Not because I'm experiencing it, but because I understand what marriage means and conversely, what no longer being married would mean. In my early 20s, I could sympathise to the extent that I'd experienced a relationship breakup, but I wouldn't have understood divorce as I would now. But I don't think it lets the advice profession off the hook in not having enough employed roles for people who want to advise. If you're old enough to know what you want to do with your life, you're old enough to be taught how to do it properly. Making self-employment or associated roles the default strikes me is not the right way to do it. Let's try something new. Thank you for joining us on this episode of our weekend essay series. We do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do keep up to date with all our new releases via Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts from. You can also keep up to date with all our new content published on the Money Marketing website, as well as our print edition Money Marketing magazine. So make sure to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Threads. See you next time.